Hey, why are you wearing tweed and wool in the summer? Well, let me tell you about it. Okay, so this is actually a twofer. Um, uh, I did two awesomely nerdy things within the space of two days. Uh, the first one was I went to go and see Felicia Day at her book signing, which was awesome. Uh, it was at the Brooks Smith Brookline Booksmith. Felicia Day went to the Coolidge Corner Theater in, in uh, Brookline, Massachusetts uh, to give a book talk, which was very cool. It was recorded and is on At Nerdist, so you can check it out there. Um, and then she went to the Brookline uh, Booksmith to, to sign her book, and I, I was one of the happy few who got a ticket to both things. Um, it was a blast. It was very cool. Felicia Day's really wonderful book is extraordinarily funny. It's really cool insight into Hollywood and the internet and how she and the internet kind of grew up at the same time, so they have this weird mirror sort of theory going on. It's a lot like theory on Hawthorne and the development of the American identity. Just touting my own thesis there. You Miss Amherst, can I have a PhD now, please? All joking aside, her book is actually quite important because she talks about her own battle with depression and anxiety, and she talked about how success can actually be a trigger of depression and anxiety. Um, she was talking about how she was developing Geek and Sundry. Um, she had been, I mean, let's, let's do the catalog of success. The largest online phenomena ever, Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. She had been part of Buffy, which was probably one of the first supernatural slash geeky shows to really take off and show America like, no, you can make A, a female protagonist, um, you can make a show about, you know, supernatural slash preternatural elements, and we will all go gaga and see it. Um, and it was also one of the first things where people in my generation and the generation coming up right behind me got to have something that was cult. This is, this is me, I really like this, identify with the show, and I get to run out and find other people whom I identify with, uh, so that I get to you know, have this way to codify myself within a larger society. I'm not an American, I'm not a white person, I am a geek. So you get to identify as a smaller subgroup and you really get to have deeper connections because of that. Um, and during all of this, while making Geek and Sunny, which became a phenomenally successful company, which I, I idolize, um, she started to feel extreme anxiety and depression, she talks about it in her book. Um, and I thought to myself, wow, that's, I never really thought of anxiety and depression being married to success. I always thought that they were married to failure, um, and I'm realizing now that's actually incorrect. They're not married to anything. They're married to the demons that live inside your head, basically. Uh, and to have someone else say, oh, this is my experience, really helped me because I have been having a great deal of success with my teaching career. I'm at a wonderful school. My boss really likes what I'm doing. My, my, when you teach, you have like 15 bosses, so all 15 of them like what I'm doing which is great. Um, I'm very happy in my school. My students are wonderful. I get along with their parents. I love the community I teach with. We have all of the same values. And when we disagree with something, we're allowed to have discourse as opposed to shouting matches. I, I, I'm so super happy at the school. Um, I, I recently, you know, adopted a dog. I'm very happy about that. So I have all of these things in my life that I should be extraordinarily happy with. And yet I have been suffering from some of the worst depression and anxiety that I've had in years. Uh, and, and the craziest thing is it's summer vacation. So it was just nice to hear someone else say, you know, anxiety and depression can happen whenever they can happen. They can happen when you are successful and happy. They can happen when you are depressed and anxious. Um, so it's just something you need to keep watch for. The dog is calling. I will return. So I got the book signed and I felt really bad. Uh, my name is confusing. I don't know why my name is confusing. It's Anne and Marie. They just happen to be sitting next to each other. The M is capitalized. My parents are hippies. I don't know what to tell you. There's an E. Yes, I'm that person. So I had written instructions on my post-it note I, I'm just a bad person. I'm just, I am. I'm just, I'm kind of a scunner, I guess, is just my, my problem. So the girl in line comes by, and she's like, oh, she writes down Anne Marie, and the first thing I notice is this is enormous space in my name, there's no space, it's all freaking one word because my parents are dirty hippies, and we're talking like, grew interesting plants in the backyard hippies. So I write down, it's one word in the M is capital, uh, because my parents are dirty hippies, heart AMD which I should have actually just given her an out and just been like, if you want to write the letters AMD, there you go, because I actually am a transhumanist, so AMD is really my name. So she signed my book, 
way excited about that. Uh, she threw in an E at the last minute, which I thought was kind of weird because she had done this whole thing about how she loved Anne of Green Gables. And so, like, she goes to spell my name without an E, and I'm just like, wouldn't you just assume everybody who's named Anne is with an E? It's, it's, I'm, I'm way overthinking this, so whatever. Um, and I am a little sad because I brought my Charlie doll with me, and I really wanted to ask her to sign it, but she looked like just very frazzled you also look like oh my god there's 50 million people here and they all want their book and they all want a selfie with me and oh my god i'm gonna have a nervous breakdown if i have to touch one more goddamn person okay the other thing and why i'm wearing tweed today so after getting home at 1 a.m last night from the felicia day event i decided to get up at five this morning and go off to camp apex in greenfield massachusetts to have fun at the doctor who camp which is run by Barbara and John. Um, and they run it, they, they literally came up with the idea because their son really enjoys Doctor Who and he also enjoys a couple of other nerdy, awesome, wonderful things. So they do those camps as well. And I thought, this, you two are just like the best parents. Like you come up with these cool ideas and then you're like, hey, it shouldn't just be for our kids, it should be for all the kids. So let's just do it. Um, it was incredibly fun. I dressed up as obviously 11. My husband dressed up as nine. Um, Mark Bruno, who is the head of the Boston Hoobians Association, actually came and he was six. And then I think it was his girlfriend, Ashley, came out and she was Amy Pond. And that was wonderful. Uh, and of course, I'd show you pictures of the event, except that these were all small children. It is crazy inappropriate to do that. So there will be no photos. Sorry. The best part about it was that these kids were just so awesome and they were all over the spectrum of whether they loved who or, or didn't even know who it was we had some kids who had seen like one episode and were like uh, what why does it make no sense and it's like ooh, you you need to meet a man named Stephen Moffat logic is not an option um, and then some kids were like you know quoting episodes uh, and that was just marvelous and I was just so happy to be with their um with them and and interacting with them and I, I really had a blast uh, and the best thing about hanging out with small children is you forget as an adult what it's like to just play we get there and it's me and my husband and a couple of other volunteers and the kids start to play and I, I jumped right in and I started playing with them I understand that these are third graders and fourth graders and some are as high as sixth grade uh, they're my height so I was able to just jump in and play I'm a little bit taller than some of them I'm a little bit shorter than some of them was, I'm a short person. I can't help it. So I'm just running around pretending to be a weeping angel, like playing tag with them and everything. It really is a shame that as adults we forget what play is like because I think play is a very big important part of life that you think at maybe 15 or 16 that you're supposed to abandon. But play doesn't ever have to go away. Just because you don't own a dog doesn't mean you can't go out into the yard and just run around and have fun. Like if you want to go play tag with your friends, go play tag with your friends. Who cares that you're 35 years old? I don't care. I, I actually am envious. I think you should go play tag with your friends. I loved it and they did a great time. And I, I really, if you have a chance to interact with the YMCA, you know, give them a pat on the back because it was a wonderful thing that they did. So there you go. Okay. Bye bye. Bad puppy, I can't believe you did that. That's a brand new book. That book was brand new and it's been signed by the author and you ate it.